I am so excited to be talking about today's topic. It is something that is very close to my heart, something that has transformed my life in so many ways. We can develop our psychic abilities within our art practice, and we can use that space to really hone our gifts. You are not gonna wanna miss today's conversation because there are a lot of messages that are coming through that I feel are very important for you to listen to if you're someone who's an artist or if you're someone who has already started receiving messages. So this is a pretty big topic and I'm going to try to really break things down so that we can really understand what this means because it's a pretty, I would say, complex and also um, long process. It's one that I've really lived with and have had the both gift and also the challenge of really working with for now a, a few decades as um, yeah, it's been a journey, <laughs> to say the least. And you, maybe if you're watching this video, you might be on your own journey also around the messages that you receive or the uh, voices that you're hearing or the um, visions that you're having. And before we get started, I really want to just define what psychic means, because I think that's really important. A lot of people define it very differently, but I really want to just um, open it up, you know, have it be a little expansive and just say that being psychic means that you are able to tune in, commune with, connect with um, other, let's say, spirits or ancestors, or it could also be future versions of yourself. Um, it could be angels. There are many, many beings that want to connect with us. I've received messages from plants, from crystals, from fruits, from animals. There are many, many, many ways that we can receive these gifts. And they come in through all of our senses, through our eyes. We could see things with our physical eyes. We could see things in our mind's eye. We could hear things in our ears inside our heads we could feel things in our body there can be tingling sensations we might feel the temperature changing there's so many ways that people receive messages other people receive knowings or understandings things come together there's a sudden clarity that happens so whatever way you're receiving your gifts uh, just know that you know you're not alone there are other people who are also receiving their messages in this way and also that yours might change and transform as you grow and develop yourself mine definitely have so where do i come off like really connecting these two i think um I'm someone that sits at an interesting intersection. I am a licensed psychotherapist. I've been in different types of therapeutic practices for over the last 10 years. I've been everything from a domestic violence advocate to a social worker. I've been in private practice. I worked with people in treatment. And in that amount of time, I've connected with a lot of people who've been receiving messages, who've been sensitive, who've been able to feel things, who've been able to channel things into their artwork and into conversation as well. I have also personally really experienced what it's like to receive messages, to um, be really confused, especially um, when you don't really feel safe going and talking to someone about it. I know that many of us have been ridiculed, we've been questioned, we've even been diagnosed when we've shared our messages, and there's also historically a long um, trauma of many visionaries, many soothsayers, many witches, uh, many indigenous communities who had sacred oracular practices having been persecuted, having been harmed for doing this work, the work literally being outlawed in certain places. And there's a lot here to unpack. And again, to know that you're not alone if you are receiving these messages, if you are hearing these things. You are not alone in hearing those things. It really is something that happens to many of us. 
And I think that's where I'm gonna start to get into my first really big point in this video is that our art practices can be beautiful containers to really hold our experience of these messages. Especially if we're feeling like we can't share these messages with other people, our art practice could be a powerful space to start to process, to start to sit with and really understand or even unfold and deepen into the psychic messages that we're already receiving. I know that it's been incredibly powerful for me to be able to really move some of these messages from maybe let's say an auditory or visionary experience into writing, into drawing, into a digital collage. There are many ways that we could start to work with what we receive and it starts to unfold, it starts to grow, it starts to deepen and transform. Because we live in this system of capitalism, because we live in a society where we have deadlines, we have to really think about time, we have to think about bills and money, so many things are reorienting us. You know, there's the media, there's constant social media presence, there's so many things that are kind of shifting, transforming, grabbing our attention and moving it into different directions. And so having that container of art practice is a powerful space that we can create with time and space. We could really say, I'm dedicating these three hours to just being with myself, being with my tools, my toys, and really allowing these messages to flow and to transform. And so that is one way that our art practice can really start to develop our psychic gifts is that we start to have a space where we can really process and we can also be with and hear, expand upon, transform our messages. There are a lot of people who also have a spiritual practice that they work with. I definitely do myself, uh, where I really sit in communion. I have different ways that I do that, whether it's with tarot cards, whether it's scrying, whether it's praying or speaking with um, different messengers that are coming to give me messages. And there's times even where, like for example, I'll be like washing the dishes or making some food or on a hike and I'll start to receive messages. You know, sometimes our ancestors and our guides don't wait until you're in ceremony. Sometimes a message really wants to come through and it'll just come through. And so our art practice could be that space where we really start to unfold it, where we transform it, we process it, we sit with it, you know. Again, it's that sacred space, that sacred container that can hold us. And so a big part of this is that we do receive messages, we do process them, we do transform them, and also our art is a powerful place for us to really be able to envision other futures, other realities, other roles for ourselves. We can start to envision, imagine these, and they can start to emerge and to grow and to take space up in our actual lives. I've seen this happen so many times. When I first started wanting to become an artist, it was really challenging for me. I really felt like it was not a path I could take and that was definitely one of the reasons why I started to really move into psychotherapy because it was a lot more stable, right? And at the same time, my heart really wanted to be an artist. I was afraid of it. I had been told my whole life that it was really unstable, that it was never going to happen. And yet that desire was there. I felt it in my heart. I knew that's what I wanted to do. And so I just want to share with you that your art practice can also be a place where you can start to imagine other possibilities for yourself. You can start to spell cast. You could start to set intention. You could start to move your life in a specific direction with your art practice. So it becomes a recursive, a holographic process. One where you're receiving messages, you're opening up your consciousness to receive, and 
you're also setting intention you're moving your energy into a direction that you want to move in your life and sometimes you might even get messages about how to do that steps to take those might show up also in your art practice there's a way that when we get lost in that repetitive calming rhythmic motion of art practice whether it's drawing or working with yarn or working on photoshop or video editing there are ways that that craft starts to unfold something starts to open something up for us that is another way that we start to develop our psychic abilities is that we start to feel clear about what the future looks like and we start to work with time in a magical way we can send messages to our future self just as i'm sending a message into the future now through this portal through this video i'm sending messages out into the future and i'm also sending a message out into the past letting the younger version of me know that your dream is real that reality that you're seeing for yourself that truth of your role within this world as an artist as a creative person as a sacred vessel and channel for this information to come through this sacred knowledge to come through that that is truth and that you are meant to move in that direction so giving myself permission now in the present moment as well as in the past and in the future we can become that bridge that moves beyond time and space just like our art can too and that's another incredible part about this process is that as artists we can start to create things that we embed we imbue with our energies with our wishes our desires our intentions and as we embed these into our work other people pick that up they are little seeds that we plant that will bloom and blossom at the right moment at the right time i myself had this whole journey of art start in that way where i saw an artwork and that work had a message for me that it just shot into my being and i was so disoriented and confused and so excited and i knew i had to follow it and so we can do the same thing with our art we can imbue it with this energy and that is another way that we develop our psychic gifts is that we start to work with fire magic which fire is creative magic it is also magic of the will and the will is the way the will is what allows us to really forge a path clear away what needs to be cleared away and move in a direction our will is so powerful to be directive so all this to say that our art practice can be an incredible container to process to even alchemize and transmute to envision other possibilities and to also have space to just really be with the part of us that really understands reality in a way that might be different than how we've been conditioned now with all that said i'm really excited to share that there are some upcoming opportunities for you to be able to work with me within the sacred space of oracular communion ceremony and also of art practice there's two really incredible containers that are coming up in the next few weeks and one actually starting this weekend so i'll share about that one first uh, the first one is called make your own visionary art and it is through morbid anatomy that is based in new york but this is a live online class that's going to be hosted by the amazing tiffany hopkins and it includes myself and two other uh magical magical guests that you may have already heard of um, the first one is yumi sakugawa and maria molteni i'll be linking all of their information below in the description or on the side i think that's where it is now so i'll be linking all the information here in this video so that you could see them and this is going to be going over multiple months and so we'll be meeting and we'll be working together i'll be sharing some of my art practice as well as some of the ways that i work with divination with um, psychic gift abilities and gifts within my art practice and then we'll be creating together and the second container that i'm really excited to share about is with the wonderful magical sarah faith goddess diener she has created resourcing the creative self 
It is an incredible container that's going to be taking place throughout the month of March. So next month, if you're watching this today here in February, and you can join myself and it's going to be also um, co-hosted with Pam Grossman, who's a really powerful witch, and also Lisa Silva, who is an amazing artist and witch as well. We are all going to be co-hosting with the wonderful Sarah Faith Godestiner. And um, again, we're going to be sharing um, about our practices. I'm going to be sharing about scrying and how I work with that in my own art practice. And we're also going to be making art together. And it's again going to be a beautiful container for us to be able to do this work and to be able to share. I'll be linking all of those here in the description of this video. Um, if you are on my mailing list, you have also received more information about these workshops. Uh, you can join the mailing list by going to my link tree. That's going to be the first link that I'm going to have here in my video. Uh, you'll be able to find where I'm at all over social media, as well as how to get onto my mailing list. People who are on my mailing list are the first to find out when I have openings available for tarot readings as well as for consultations. And I also share about all the upcoming collaborations, the projects that I've been working on, the art that I have available to be collected. And you could see all of that through my link tree as well. It has links to all of my different art accounts, to my main website. And so thank you for watching this video. I really hope that this has helped you understand a little bit more the relationship between art practice and uh, your psychic abilities and gifts and how you can really develop them. You can check out other videos here on my YouTube channel about magic, about spirituality and art practice. I am a pretty expansive person and my channel contains all of that wonderful complexity. And so you will be seeing all sorts of videos, including my artworks as well. Uh, so definitely uh, subscribe, like, share my work. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much.